So again, good evening to all of you. Tomorrow you have uh, a special uh, exercise where you're going to identify the morphology of a particular type of uh, uh, morphology of RBCs in a particular type of anemia. Okay, so let us see what it is. So uh, let me start uh, sharing the screen. Okay, this is uh, a nice picture you can uh, see here. What can you see here? Slideshow should be better. What is it that is seen, um, uh, Pranjal? Uh, and sea coast. Sea, okay, fine. So, what are we talking about? See? So, this is Mediterranean. We are, we are seeing this. So, I showed you, a, showed you a beautiful picture before I showed you this map. So, why Mediterranean Sea now? Yes, okay. So, you should be louder. You know, your microphone doesn't catch what you speak. So just see this belt. See how many in the world, how many countries are involved across. So we are bothered about India. Almost the entire India is involved. So we are talking about a disease that is a type of hemolytic anemia, which is called as thalassemia. So I was asking Pranjal why is it called as thalassemia. So this was an exercise. So he had not uh, written this and he's come back with this. So Mediterranean anemia is the other name for thalassemia. So it was uh, first discovered in 1925 in people who were in and around, you know, not in, so around this or Mediterranean belt. So the cause was found uh, to be abnormal hemoglobin structure in 1946 and then 1960. So doctors knew that it is a retransfusion of blood that could help these patients survive. Okay. So thalassa is C. Heme, as you all know, is blood, a Greek word. Okay. Patients were from Mediterranean background, hence the name thalassemia. So let us define thalassemia. It is defined as a group of autosomal recessive disorder. So first point is it is an autosomal recessive disorder. Involves what? It involves hemoglobin synthesis. So what happens if this disease occurs? It is characterized by reduced rate of production of one or more of the globin chains of hemoglobin. So how many ch globin chains are there in hemoglobin? Most two alpha two beta. Two alpha two beta. So there is reduction in the chain synthesis of one or more of the globin chains. So this leads to imbalance in the globin chain synthesis. So hemoglobin there is defective hemoglobinization. So we can say the thalassemia we call it as a syndrome which results from defect in the rate of synthesis of alpha or beta chains. So when this defect is there in hemoglobin production so it is called as hemoglobinopathy and this defect could be either in the structure or in the quantity of the globin chains. So here thalassemia mainly refers to the defect in the synthesis of alpha or beta chains. So we put this under what quantitative hemoglobinopathy. So what quantity does not exist, it is reduced production of alpha or beta chains. So, Francher wants to say there is no structural abnormality here. Good. Okay. So, this is the commonest type of hemoglobinopathy, which, uh, see how many people are there in the world. 250, which affects, 200, uh, which has affected or uh, about 250 million people in the world, you know, they are affected. That means, is inherited, right? About 4.5% of the world's population carry this gene. So for every 100 individuals, about 4.5, so almost 5 people are there. 
and asymptomatic uh, this how will they present they could be asymptomatic carriers just have the defective gene or suffer from severe anemia yes so this is recap recollect okay learned about adrenal hemoglobin fetal and embryonic so hba is what alpha 2 beta louder alpha 2 beta alpha 2 beta 2 a2 alpha 2 gamma 2 and a2 is delta 2 delta 2 f is alpha 2 gamma 2 alpha 2 gamma 2 bar is gamma 4 gamma 4 okay so we were talking about the defect in the globin chain synthesis right so imagine alpha chain synthesis is defective okay so which type of uh, uh, hemoglobin is produced so beta just joins with beta only it forms beta 4 so gamma joins with only gamma okay because there is no alpha for these so uh, hb bars right so abnormal uh, uh, hemoglobins are formed here fine then embryonic uh, hemoglobins are hb gober 1 gober 2 hb four plant so inheritance is let us just look at it simplify it it is autosomal recessive so alpha chain synthesis and beta chain synthesis so each is controlled by a particular gene for alpha chain synthesis the gene is controlled by two genes where are they there are the short arm of chromosome 16 whereas beta chain synthesis is controlled by genes that are there on chromosome number 11 autosomes so in beta thalassemia so we classify this uh, Uh, thalassemia is into beta and alpha so the name itself says if we say beta thalassemia that indicates what the defect, yeah, defect is in the beta chain synthesis it is reduced or sometimes it could be absent so alpha thalassemia indicates red reduction in the synthesis of alpha chains so miscellaneous the thalassemia syndromes so they could be combined combination of this quantitative hemoglobin but with structural defects also we may see a thalassemia beta thal and all uh, i mean thalassemia and sickle cell all that you know combinations we can see that means they can be combined with abnormal hemoglobins like hbd hbs hbd and all that yes so you have given a uh, classification here i think we can come back to this uh, later fine so alpha thalassemia let us take alpha thalassemia so alpha thalassemia is uh, the genetic uh, 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 inheritance we can say so heterozygous is alpha plus thalassemia so that means there are four genes so here patients have three genes so one gene is deleted and show a better uh, uh, picture so if one gene is deleted we call him a silent carrier he may not manifest it all because he's got three genes which produce enough of alpha genes so if two genes are deleted it could be both the genes from the same chromosome right or it could be one gene from each so what do we call this as he becomes a trait because out of four two are deleted so if three genes are deleted it suffers from hbh disease so double heterozygote if all the four genes are deleted so there is no production of alpha chains at all so only the beta and the gamma chains are formed. so this is uh, incompatible with life so this is what is shown here normal there are four genes silent carrier has three one is deleted so trait has two genes two are deleted so these two deleted genes could be from the same chromosome or one from each chromosome this hbh disease is when only one gene is present three are deleted hydrops fetalis is there are no genes at all totally zero that means alpha chain production is not seen at all so hydrops fetalis so we said four genes you have to remember i am sure you have read about hydrops fetalis in rh incompatibility so when you are asked to name another cause for hydrops fetalis just remember thalassemia alpha thalassemia where 
all the four alpha genes are deleted. So this is generalized edema. So even uh, jaundice could be there. So usually generalized edema. Uh, what we have taught you is anasarka in edema classes. So the most severe form of thalassemia and results in intrauterine death. The child is pale, bloated, severe tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia is the one which is resulting in this uh, severe edema. So moderate to massive hepatomegaly. So this is a repetition of genetic inheritance of alpha thalassemia. Now beta thalassemia. So when we say beta thalassemia, what does it mean? Defective beta chain synthesis. This is what is it? It's a group of hemolytic anemia. Where do we put this as? Quantitative hemoglobinopathy. So this results from reduced synthesis of beta chain. Beta chain is the globin. Yeah. So commonest type all over the world we see this large number of cases in India. We, we have many patients, you know, many children with the, uh, this beta thalassemia. They come regularly for blood donation. So you should see them. For one child, Durga, I remember, she started coming to us when we started this college. She's, she's grown up now. She must be, uh, when did we start? Okay, 2006. She must be 14, 15 years now. And they all know. So whenever the hemoglobin uh, uh, drops, you know, and she cannot breathe, she'll tell her father, you know, take me to a hospital and then I need blood. You know, she's got bloated abdomen, a severe uh, hepatomegaly. That's a problem. We can give them uh, blood, but uh, I'll tell you what happens later. Repeated uh, blood transfusion. So once you come back, I'll show you all these patients. There are about, uh, I think, 150 or more than 150 registered uh, uh, with us in this hospital. And uh, they're all happy with us because we keep uh, giving them blood as and when they require. And very important thing is many of these, you know, Durgama whom I was telling is A negative and uh, many are O negative. So, but somehow whenever they come, they're uh, getting blood and we have uh, blood donors uh, of this rare groups who are employed uh, in our uh, hospital and college campus. So, they're ready to donate anytime. So, inheritance here for beta thalassemia, the gene is located on chromosome 11. So genetic mutation leads to beta chain, defective, defective, that is decreased beta chain synthesis. So depending on the extent of reduction of beta chain, so beta thalassemia is classified as two types. What are the two types? Can you uh, put your chair here, move forward? So this is beta zero thalassemia, where there is complete absence. That is, and beta plus where there is reduced but little synthesis of beta chain. Yes. So thalassemia major, this is a homozygous stage. So the most severe form where there is increased HBF levels and they are always transfusion dependent because no chance of hemoglobin production at all. So they just require external source of hemoglobin to live. So thalassemia intermedia is a double heterozygous state. So it is moderately severe anemia. They are not transfusion dependent because their hemoglobin level could be 5 to 7 grams. Not so as low as uh, in major. They grow into adult life. And thalassemia minor is a heterozygous state. Asymptomatic, they have very mild, no anemia at all. So Pranjal was talking about some... Uh, Celebrities, what is it? Mm -hmm. Angel? Amita Bachchan and uh, Amita Patel. So, so Amita Bachchan and Amisha Patel, he was uh, mentioning that they all have uh, thalassemia minor. So it is the blood picture will be just microcytic hypochromic anemia, minimal uh, uh, anemia. Yes. So point mutation, another thing, various point mutations on the globin chain clusters are seen. This is a single nucleotide substitutions are divided into two groups, promoter region and chain terminator. That means you know, mutations also can occur apart from this deletions. So this is the pattern of inheritance that is shown. So unaffected, if both are carriers, what could happen? So one child could be, that is 25% occurrence of a normal uh, uh, child with 
no inherited uh, abnormality at all. So otherwise, one 25 chance per one child to be affected, not to suffer. Otherwise, uh, about 50 percent will have same uh, uh, trait as the parents. No, this is the same thing. So thalassemia major, minor, thalassemia minor again, and then normal. So we showed in the previous slide. So if parent is thalassemia, both parents are having thalassemia minor. Ecophysiology. So accumulation of free alpha chains. So normal blast, it will not survive. So there is ineffective erythropoiesis. So even before these cells, red cells are released into the circulation, if they die, we call it as ineffective erythropoiesis. And if the defective cells are released into the blood, I told you in the previous class about culling and the pitting phenomenon. So the spleen causes lysis of these cells. The marrow and bone changes are there is marked erythroid hypoplasia. So to compensate for the anemia, there is marked erythroid hyperplasia. And then wherever, so normally we see erythroid or say hemopoiesis in the bone marrow. So all other organs which were functioning in the embryonic life, fetal life, so they also start producing this. so extra medullary hemopoiesis we say. That leads to hepatosplenomegaly and another cause is of course repeated transfusions with iron overload. So synthesis of HBF normally by age of by the age of six months it reduces. So it continues after even after six months. And uh, why iron load I was telling you one of the cause for uh, this organomegaly is because of hemolysis of RBCs. So, the released iron is taken up by all these organs. Then, increased absorption of iron from the GIT. Then, three is repeated transmissions in the patients. Okay. So, iron is there. But why hemoglobinization is not there? Because the hemoglobin chains are not there. So, there is no defect in the iron. It is not iron deficiency. Iron is adequate. More than adequate. Excessive. Okay. So each transfusion, one unit what we transfuse has about 200 milligrams of iron. So imagine that repeated, some children come every 15 months, one, 15 days, once in 15 days. So how much of iron gets accumulated? Okay, so this is the mechanism of uh, uh, this is what uh, he wants to show, uh, presentation and uh, complications but it's quite uh, difficult to you know undergo I mean read this but uh, I just tell you. So deformed RBC they're all destroyed in the bone marrow that is ineffective erythropoiesis okay. Then there is hemolysis. So with hemolysis and uh, this what happens there is anemia because RBC is lysed okay. So at the same time what is released from the Lysed RBC is iron. So we said visceral iron deposition with viscera overdone. So then what else is liberated? So what happens? You have read in physiology about the hemoglobin metabolism, right? So, so the bilirubin that is released, right? So what do we find in the serum? There is increased bilirubin. So that is one of the features of hemolytic anemias. That is hyperbilirubinemia. So what type of bilirubin is this? It is indirect bilirubin. Okay. So what happens many a times? Mother says the child has a jaundice also. But in the normal course, what is the common cause for jaundice? Hepatitis, right? So in hepatitis, there is bilirubin, urea, also excretion of bile pigments and bile salts. So urine would be high colored here in spite of jaundice. Jaundice is mild. Urine need not be high colored. But urine could be high colored because what happens with the indirect uh, increase of indirect bilirubin? There is increased urobilinogen. 
So increased urobilinogen. Urobilin is the one which gives a straw color to the urine. So increased urobilinogen can also give rise to high colored urine. So when there is high colored urine, so how do we test with the presence of bile pigments and bile salts? We do urine analysis. So when we do this in such children, there will be absence of bile pigment and bile salts. But the child has jaundice. So we call this as acoluric jaundice. Jaundice is there, it is acoluric, that means bile salts and bile pigments are not excreted. What can happen in such children, that is with hemolytic anemia? So repeated hemolysis and repeated this, uh, you know, uh, increase and because of increase in the bilirubin, so sometimes they land up with gallstones. What type of gallstones? Pigment stones, pigment stones, okay. So what can happen to the pigment stones? They're usually friable. I should have put a picture here. I'm sorry, I'll show you that later. So they're friable, they're dark, uh, black or whatever in color. So sometimes they clog, they, they block the bile duct. So that time what happens? Biliary obstruction. Yeah, they cause obstructive jaundice. So that time there is appearance of bile pigments and bile salts in the urine. Okay. So how a child with hemolytic anemia can have presence of bile salts and bile pigments in the urine like this. Normally it is not there. It is a choleric jaundice. But if there is a complication, because you've written gallstones here, I'm telling about this. Then cortical thinning. So bone marrow starts expanding. So there is thinning of the cortex of the flat bone, the uh, uh, skull and all that. Yes. So extramedullary hemopoiesis. That leads to bone pain also. Then organomegaly you have written. So one of the causes again, always deposition and extramedullary hemopoiesis. So these are the features. Asymptomatic at birth, present later. Because HBF is pr protecting then thalassemic phases, typically when we see it. Okay, so let us uh, see this again and go to slideshow. So typical thalassemia phase which we were uh, talking about, right? So all these because of the uh, erythropoiesis in the increase. And this is uh, hair on end appearance or crew hair cut. That is a new bone formation along the lattices. Expansion of the medullary cavities of the bones, widening of the diploid, that separation of the tables, you can say, the inner outer and inner tables, and uh, see, the, even the long bones. But here we are showing the, with the skull and striations at right angles, that is a hair on end appearance. So, how do we investigate for thalassemia? This was a nice. Uh, simple way which is uh, put up last uh, in the previous class. So we said microcytic hypochromic anemia, the causes as undergraduates, please remember iron deficiency, thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia, anemia of chronic infection. So blood counts are done, MCV is reduced, fine. So this is reduced hemoglobin for the age and sex. So do iron state, find out iron status. If it is low, then we know it is iron deficiency. So iron status is uh, normal, then do HbA2 with electrophoresis. So then you will know that normal hemoglobins in thalassemia. Fine. So if it is increased, I said how we go about it. So laboratory findings, uh, let's remember, very easy, reduced MCV, MCH, MCHC. And anemia is severe, 2 to 8 grams. So if somebody has already treated the child with iron, there will be no improvement at all. Absolutely no improvement. Okay. So then there could be mild increase in the reticulocyte count and uh, serum haptoglobin is reduced. X-ray, I told you what will be there. So let us look at the peripheral smear. This is what we are going to see. So peripheral smear shows an isopolculocytosis. You know what is that? Variation in the size of the RBCs and variation in shape. So typically it is microcytic hypochromic anemia. There will be target cells. Can you make out the target cells? I show you better pictures. So these target cells are called as 
So other names for target cells, they're called as leptocytes in the RBCs. They're also called as Mexican HLC. When you look at it through electron microscope, this is how it is. So it's got that elongated thing. It's very bell shaped also, they say. And uh, that is, you know, the yeah, hatch. So codocyte and all that. So what happens when the RBC is like this, when they make a smear, this protruding portion, it comes and sits in the center. So that gives a dark uh, hemoglobinization in the center and then periphery would be hemoglobin. And RBC will see peripheral ring of hemoglobin plus central condensation of hemoglobin. That is the target cell or the bullseye appearance and all that. So this someone has uh, written it well, but uh, clarity is not there. So same thing, the photocyte and the target cell. Yes, peripheral smear findings. Uh, <coughs> nuclear teardrop cells, fragmented RBCs, nucleated red cells. I'm going to talk only about this. All these, you know, have in jolly bodies and a lot of basophilic stippling. So they are more characteristic of B12 deficiency plus post, you know, splenectin we see all this, but uh, they may not be that uh, prominent in thalassemia. So this is a nucleated RBC. Okay. So the typical picture of all the cells that you can identify. Yeah. It's a nucleated RBC. Yeah. How do we say it's a nucleated RBC or uh, immature WBC? The cytoplasm of that would be like that of the RBC, yes. So plenty of target cells, okay. We are not seeing tear drop cells here, but hypochromia is seen, right. So microcytic hypochromic blood picture, it could be basophilic stippling, tear drop cells, see, tear drop cells and target cells. And depending on the severity of anemia, we see the nucleated red cells. Some, sometimes in the smear would be studded with that and while we do a WBC count, all these nucleated red cells would be counted as WBCs, yes. Other hematological findings are osmotic rigidity. It is decreased. The cells do not lyse early because they are thin, you know, they take up a lot of hypotonic solution. Leukocytes will be increased, they will be shift to the left, platelets are normal. So biochemical findings that I already told you, there is hyperbilirubinemia and when we do a differential that's important, it's only unconjugated bilirubin that is increased and urine I, I said urobilinogen is increased, urine urobilinogen is increased, serum ion ferritin are increased. So, this is going against micro, uh, iron deficiency, total iron binding capacity is decreased, transferrin saturation is increased. So when we look at the bone marrow, bone marrow is markedly hypercellular and what is the lineage that is increased? Erythroid series, so erythroid hyperplasia, ME ratio, this is when we are looking at how many cells uh, of myelopoiesis series are there and then how many erythroid, so it is reversed. You know the normal ME ratio. Okay? 2 to 3 is to 13, 2 to 3 to 13 is to 1 we say. That means in a sense like myeloid series are more. Right? So this erythropoiesis, pink include. So yes, so we may see inclusions uh, uh, of free alpha chains could be seen. Okay. So bone marrow iron is increased. So this is again another picture. So by this uh, what is this appearance? Hair on end appearance is new bone formation on the outer table producing perpendicular radiations resembling few hair cuts. So this is uh, a bone marrow uh, biopsy where uh, a special study is done to demonstrate hemosiderin or the iron presence of iron. So it is studded with iron. What is the stain? We have been repeating this Russian blue. With all this, this is the typical Russian blue color, so it is studded you, you can see. Then acid elution test, it's called as Klehaer's test. What we do is on the smear to note how many cells have HBF. This is actually now I, I can say historical interest, we may just do it. So we take the slide smear and then uh, treat it with acid, dilute acid. 
So HbA is there, it, it, it comes out of the cell. Whereas HbF, cells containing hemoglobin F, they resist elution by acid, so they remain. So after treating the smears with acid, we stain it with eosin. So all the RBCs which have retained HbF, they take up eosin, they appear dark, that is pink, and those cells which had HbA, where the HbA is removed from the cells, they all appear as ghost cells because they don't take up the stain. See, all these are fetal RBCs. This is ghost cells, adult cells, okay. It's not of much help, but uh, uh, about 20 years back, you know, we were doing this a lot and I was making the RPGs go to uh, the labor room to get the cord blood. So that acts as a control, you know, to do this test. Then HB electrophoresis, this is the best, which identifies various hemoglobin fractions. So in beta or in thalassemia major, there no beta chain. So HVF is increased. HVF is increased. So major, it is about 30 to 90 percent of hemoglobin is F and A2. So it is HVF and A2 that are increased. So A2 here is less than 3.5. So in thalassemia minor, HbA is present, whereas major we don't see A. So A2 is slightly increased. This is the only findings. Eh? A2 is more than the normal, what is present in the normal adults. Then in thalassemia intermedia, HbF is increased, but the increase is not to the range of thalassemia major. So thalassemia, beta thalassemia 2, abnormal hemoglobin with the Abnormal in the sense of uh, HBF, we don't expect it, it to be present uh, in adult life. So HBF, 32-90%, HBA2, which is in more. So screening test for uh, thalassemia trait, sometimes we do this. It's for a nest drop test, very easy. It's naked eye, single tube, red cell osmotic fragility test. So we just take 5 m, 2 tubes. In each test tube, we take 5 ml of 0.35% saline. Both these tubes, we add one drop of blood. So to one, we add control and the other suspected. This is helpful for thalassemia screening, is it? So one drop of that. Then mix it, allow it to stand for 30 minutes. Then after that, so we just look at these two tubes by holding them in front of a black line. Okay, white sheet with a black line written. So, if black line is not visible, we say it is thalassemia trait. Easy, see? The two tubes, what I said. This is control, where black line is visible. So, patient or screening thalassemia, it is not seen. What is the cause, uh, Pranjit? Well, Louder. Okay. This is what we were talking about in osmotic fragility also. So course of the disease post poorly transfused then and transfused to the dye of infection, galaxy and all that. So regular transfusion they reach people. But I tell you parents spend so much of money. No, at least uh, you know, not we give them uh, uh, free blood and transfusion sets and all that. You know, but still, uh, uh, they spend a lot of money for these uh, chelating agents and bone marrow transplantation. It cannot happen for everybody. I mean, it is all there in books, but uh, you know, for the common man, it's very difficult. So regular blood transfusions, splenectomy, if the, it's really problematic, then bone marrow transplantation and gene therapy. So best is. Uh, prevention okay screening is important so health education carrier screening and genetic counseling and prenatal diagnosis so we need to try to prevent all these diseases and when found uh, let us treat okay so that's about uh, uh, thalassemia so we have one more uh, uh, topic to be uh, talked to you that is uh, sickle cell anemia so learn about uh, thalassemia more about thalassemia so get involved and come forward to donate blood. And if you see this 
children you will know really you know what happens so once you come back so i'll make you i'll see that you all interact with our uh, you know children who come to the pediatrics but uh, come to pediatrics department for blood transfusion but uh, they all come to us the blood bank for the blood okay so that's about thalassemia is read from the textbooks what textbooks not just pathology so read from pediatric books so you get more knowledge okay don't say pathological aspect i read now and then everything about treatment and uh, clinical aspects later so they should be we have uh, tried to tell you whatever concepts you need to know now at this juncture okay thank you uh, thanks pranjal i removed my uh, mask that you were wearing okay good nicely made ppt thank you so i showed you dr tejinder singh's uh, book anyway i said i'll show you at the picture so this is the book so oh, it becomes ulta right when we show this one is a Thank you.